living from Cymastery. Every spring, the river herrings swim upstream to get to their spawning grounds in Plymouth, Massachusetts. There's actually two types of river herring. One is called the alewife and the other is called the bluebacks. The alewife are actually the first to arrive at their spawning grounds when the water is 51 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. I'm a river herring swimming upstream in a brook in Plymouth, Massachusetts. So this is Plymouth Harbor. Out there is the Atlantic Ocean and here all the river herring start their long two mile journey up to Billington Pond thanks to a project where they are taking down a dam so that the herring can have an easier route up to Billington Pond to spawn and mate and lay their eggs. So I learned this from Darius, a member of the Mashpee Wampanoags, who was down here the other day. And he said for his people, these herring, I mean, have been coming hundreds of thousands of years to Plymouth, to this brook right here. And he said for his people, when the herring arrive, this is the new year. This is the beginning. We're going to eat. We're going to have fertilizer. We're going to grow things. This is the new, not the dark of January, frozen cold, not then. Now, now with the fish, these fish are so important. Our getting, taking the dam down upstream has taken federal money, state money, and town money. It's been an enormous, enormous project so that more fish, the, the guys from the um, fisheries department would come with buckets and scoop the fish out from a little further upstream and put them in the truck and drive them further up so they could get to Billington Sea. Yes, and do you want to know why it's called Billington Sea? Because one day, one of the pilgrims, whose name was John Billington, was standing on a hill up here, and he looked up in that direction, and he said, oh, it's the sea. He saw a body of water. I mean, as we know it, Billington Sea is a pond. But John Billington may have been drinking beer or something. And he thought he saw the sea up that way, and so the rest of the pilgrims were <laughs> And so they named it after him. They called it Billington Sea. <laughs> Isn't that great? Because it's not a sea at all. It's a pond. It's a pond. <laughs> These fish right here, they have spent the last few weeks swimming here from Nova Scotia. Oh my goodness. Nova Scotia. So they are called anadromous which means they live in the salt water and they spawn in the fresh water up in Billington Sea. In the middle of winter, they start swimming here, 1,200 miles. Wow. Swim, 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 1,200 miles. They, get, they have to know to turn right into, into Plymouth Harbor, into Plymouth Bay. They have to know that. That's amazing. They come here because they were born here. And after they spawn, they don't die. They turn around and go back. But anyway, they come under the bridge down there that connects the ocean with the brook. And they have to then, after swimming 1,200 miles, they have to swim two miles against the current upstream and get up that fish ladder to get to their spawning place. They are so motivated. Nancy showed me how fish rest behind rocks in still water. Also, if a predator flies overhead, they respond to a shadow by clumping together. They seem to also get jumpy when the photographer stands up like you will see in a few seconds. The herring gain 80 feet in elevation from the harbor to Billington Sea, which is actually a pond, which is two miles. Imagine being in a wave pool. Like, so when people are in wave pools, they just swim and they don't go anywhere because you have a current going against 
your swimming. Now imagine the strength you would need to actually get somewhere in a wave pool and not stay in the same spot. So that's what the herring are doing. And they're doing that for about two miles. The herring arrived here April 21st, 2019, when scientists counted 20,000 fish in this pool. The rate at the top of the fish ladder was 500 every 10 minutes. It's great that the population is increasing because they have been a threatened species in the past. This is because of development and pollution which causes habitat loss, especially since 40% of the world's population lives within 100 kilometers of the coast, according to Northeastern University's Marine Science Center. These are some river herring resting at the top of the fish ladder that took them over the dam. This wire over the river is electronically counting fish from previous years that came back from the ocean. Also, a female river herring can lay anywhere from 30,000 to 200,000 eggs at a time, according to NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Association. According to the Fish and Wildlife Service, hatching can be as soon as three to six days, depending on the water temperature. The baby herring don't go back out to sea until late summer to fall. Then when they're only three to five years old, like my friend here, Sebastian, they go back upstream to spawn and have babies. Mind blown! Yeah, it's so cool! So now we are at the finish line of all the herring who have come up from Nova Scotia in Canada. And we are at the Billington Sea. This is where they have come to uh, spawn. And when the baby herring hatch, they'll come all the way back down to the ocean. They can't uh, mate and lay their eggs at the ocean. The, there's too much rapidly moving water, too many dangers. So they come all the way up here upstream to mate and lay their eggs. Herring aren't the only creatures counted in this area. There's eels too. This is an eel monitor. Climb right through those rocks, right under those rocks. And the herring will eat them? Nope. So how many have you so, counted today? Around like 2,500 I think. Okay, so we scoop them from this box okay. and then we'll put them in a bucket like in that bucket, yeah. and then we'll just transport them by the bucket full yeah, yeah. Uh, right across the street there. Thank you for watching another video from Sci Mastery. Make sure to check out all of the resource links in the description and I'm going to remind you to share the video and subscribe. Yeah. And if you don't know already, Sci Mastery stands for Science, Math, and History. Tell me in the comments, what should I Sci Mastery next? And Sebastian here can tell us a little bit about foxes. He loves foxes. You want to tell us a little about foxes? Do you know foxes never hibernate? Yeah, we all thought that foxes hibernated, but they don't hibernate. That's a cool thing to know. Thank you for watching.
Bye. <laughs> what did you find, Sebastian? I found a hidden plant. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just get rid of that part and try it over. Bye. Um, I found. Look at all the beautiful green plants. Yeah. Yeah, it's spring. The the plants are growing now. Did you know that daffodils smell sweet? Yeah, it's spring. Look at all our flowers.